Hello, Peter. Hello. Welcome to the University of Manchester. After 34 years' service, uh, you've now been retired uh, less than a fortnight from the, uh, the police. Mm. How does that feel? I have to be honest, it feels liberating, really. In some ways, I'm almost sorry to have to say that, but certainly probably, you know, after 13 years as a chief constable, um, I've been surprised, really, about uh, once I've made the decision, uh, recognising the pressure um, of the job, um, you know, the fact that it is 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, just a whole range of incidents, um, the degree of scrutiny, 24-hour news, um, social media. So, in a strange way, you know, and, and of course being a police chief is a bit of a straitjacket. You've got to keep out of politics. You feel you're being watched the whole time almost. Um, and so, for to be no longer a police officer, to be no longer a chief constable, while I enormously enjoyed it, uh, yeah, I, I actually feel free. Um, liberating. Now, knowing you and uh, how much you do, you, what you do in the community and uh, contribution uh, uh, outside the police, uh, liberating you to do what? Well, I'm uh, now um, immediately chief executive of a ch charity called Retrack that works with street children in Africa. Um, that's very different. It's going from an organisation of 10,000 people, as I had in Greater Manchester Police, uh, to one of 180 people, most of them in Africa. Um, but an area of, uh, you know, on, on issues of development that I feel very passionate about. Um, but also part of the liberation is being able to concentrate on things, you know, which really interest me. Um, so I'm really honoured to be the honorary professor here um, at the university. It gives me a chance to think about some more things, to you know, go in depth into one or two issues that interest me. Um, and the other thing I'm, I'm very keen on is the whole issue about community cohesion. Clearly I've been heavily involved in issues like extremism. We've tried to do a lot of work in Greater Manchester across um, the different faiths. Um, and I hope still very much to be involved in that. Now, I don't want to touch on uh, what you're going to cover in your lecture, but uh, in terms of, of uh, uh, your contribution uh, to uh, uh, the university, how, how, do you, how do you see that panning out? What, what would you like to do as, as, as an academic uh, with a different hat on? Well, I'd hope to try and strengthen the links between academia uh, and particularly the great universities we have here in Manchester, um, and particularly the police service, particularly actually the wider public service. Um, I'm really excited about the devolution agreement here in, in Manchester, in Greater Manchester. It's an enormous opportunity. Um, and I would hope that the university, University of Manchester, can come behind that. Uh, because you know, what it's about, essentially, is very new thinking in the way that the public service is going to be organised. Um, big issues about how we engage differently um, with the public, new models of governance. Uh, all been obviously within a context of very different financial situations, um, some really serious social problems we're trying to deal with. Um, sadly, in a, in a smaller world where issues like uh, mass migration, terrorism, uh, are big issues which affect Greater Manchester as anywhere else in the world. You know, so this is a fascinating, challenging time, really. There are big opportunities in Manchester, Greater Manchester. You know, sometimes feel the whole of the world is looking in on us, watching what some see as an experiment. So I think, you know, the university and other institutions getting a, uh, behind that, I think, is really important. And if I can help to make some of that link, um, then I think that would be very fulfilling. So as a Londoner, uh, uh, you came up to Manchester via some other uh, yeah. uh, cities, uh, so now you will stay here and, uh, and uh, contribute uh, to what is uh, an exciting future for, for this great city. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, I've always, it was always my dream to be the Chief Constable of Greater Manchester. Uh, people have said, why don't you become the Commissioner of Greater Manchester? Why, why Manchester? Um, well, it was just something. Well, it's about the profile of the place, isn't it? It is about the profile. It has particular policing challenges um, because of history of organised crime and uh, the gun culture. But it's just the whole profile of Manchester. And um, you know, I did work in Birmingham. I was in the Midlands Police um, for eight years. But it just doesn't. We won't have, talk about no, that. No, it just doesn't have the profile of right. Manchester and Greater Manchester. And again, I find it really interesting that uh, even you know the, the charity work I've been involved in. You go anywhere in the world. You go into sadly the poorest areas of Uganda. What have they all heard about? They've all heard about Manchester United um, and Wayne Rooney. So yeah. that's only one aspect but of maybe life. Manchester uh, University of Manchester and Greater Manchester Police. Uh, 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 they can talk about a bit more. Now. Yeah, that's right. But it, you know, it, I think it's us shamelessly. On the other hand, um, being prepared to use some of that profile, some yeah. of that interest there is about the football world, whether we like it or not. Um, and then building other strengths like absolutely our academic profile, like our policing profile, and also seriously saying that this wonderful city. Uh, you know, can be an example to the rest of the world, particularly in issues like the whole range of different cultures and religions, and on the whole, people living, uh, you know, peacefully together. Uh, sadly, when you look at some of the conflicts in the rest of the world, that's a pretty powerful model. 
that we should be exporting.